this episode, we'll take a look at how to solve time problems using Table 1 in the Nautical Almanac. We'll do a few example problems and then introduce Moonrise and Moonset. If you remember to the examples in the last episode, our process was to correct values from the Nautical Almanac first for latitude and then for longitude. All of our previous latitude corrections were easy to help you get the fundamentals. But what if the latitude is more complex? Table 1 in the Nautical Almanac can help. In this example, we're at 46 degrees, 41.3 north, and 60 degrees west. We'll start with latitude, and there are two ways you can solve a difficult latitude problem. First, you can use ratios from elementary school. You need to convert the latitude into decimal notation by dividing the minutes into 60. Then, pull the bracketing values from the nautical almanac and set up a ratio using those values. In this case, we want the value for 1.69 degrees between 40 and 45 degrees. Given the sunrise times for the tabulated values, the ratio is therefore 1.69 is to 5 degrees as x number of minutes is to 7 minutes. Using cross multiplication to solve it, we can see that x is about 2.4 minutes. So we need to add 2.4 minutes to our tabulated time. Table 1 in the Nautical Almanac basically solves ratios for you. You just need to feed it the correct information. It's located in the back of the book and it wants the tabulated interval 45 to 50 degrees is 5 degrees and the time difference for those tabulated figures 0645 to 0652 is 7 minutes. You can see it is setting up the ratio for you. Enter the table with your latitude difference from the tables and you can pull out a correction about 2.5 minutes in this case. Now that latitude is corrected, we need to take a look at longitude. In this case, we're at 60 degrees west, which is our standard meridian, so no correction is necessary. And we already have our final answer, depending on which method you used. So to finish up intermediate level sun problems, let's solve problem 4-2 from the Cutterman's Guide to Basic Celestial Navigation, the companion text to this video series. At the given position, we'll correct for latitude first using the daily figures to get us into table 1. We want the intermediate value, and we can't solve it in our head, so we note the tabulated interval the time difference for those latitudes, and the latitude difference that we want. Table 1 gives us a latitude correction of about 11.5 minutes. We can apply that to the base time, and we come up with a latitude corrected time of sunset of 18, 35, and 30 seconds. Now we need to correct for longitude. The standard meridian we're observing is 30 degrees west, and we're 1 degree and some change west of it. The conversion of arc to timetables will help us determine how long the sun will take to transit that distance of arc, and it gives us our longitude correction. Applying that, we have our final answer of 18, 39, and 45 seconds. What about the moon? It's the same basic idea, latitude first and then longitude, but the moon is so close to the earth that it moves irregularly and the nautical almanac has a hard time keeping up with its changes, so there's a special table to use called table 2. The key for moon problems is to note the times for the day you want as well as the neighboring day. In the western hemisphere, that means the day after you want. In the eastern hemisphere, it's the day before. Use the values for both days and it will help you make the moon correction from table 2. So we'll take the value for June 16th and June 17th, then use both of them to help determine the final answer. Table 2 wants the difference between those times, which is 69 minutes. The table 2 correction is therefore 23 minutes, and it needs to be added to the day we want. The instructions are at the bottom. They can remind you of what you need to do in case you forget.
Next, we need to correct for longitude, but in this case, no correction is required because we're at the standard meridian. Let's try a more difficult moon problem for the given position. First, we'll correct for latitude, either using table one or mental interpolation. In this case, the latitude corrected value is 19 hours, 12 minutes, and 30 seconds. But don't forget, for the moon, we need the neighboring day as well. In the western hemisphere, it's the following day. So we need to repeat the calculation for the 17th of June as well. The latitude corrected time for the 17th is 20 hours and 12 minutes. So the time difference between the two days is 1 hour and 30 seconds. We can use that value to enter table 2 and retrieve the first longitude correction that we need, and that looks like 21 minutes. We apply that correction, but that's to the time for the standard meridian. We're observing plus 8 uniform, which corresponds to 120 degrees west, but we're 5 degrees to the west of that. So the conversion of arc to timetables will give us another 20 minute correction for longitude that we must apply to get the final answer of 19 hours, 53 minutes, and 30 seconds. So in summary for the moon, correct for latitude just like the sun, then do it again for the following day in the western hemisphere. Use that difference to get a correction from table two. Once that correction is applied, then correct the value for your longitudinal difference from the standard meridian you're observing on your watch. We correct for latitude, then for longitude. And for the moon, there's just that table two correction as well. In the next episode, we'll get even more difficult with time problems.